On March 5th, 1945, Lena Baker, who was convicted of capital murder of a white man named Ernest Knight, was executed by the state of Georgia. Miss Baker was the only woman in Georgia to be executed by electrocution. Here is her story. Lena Baker was born June the 8th, 1900. She was born to a family of sharecroppers and raised near Cuthbert, Georgia. Now, she had three siblings and they moved out into the country when um, Lena was a child. And as a youth, she and her siblings, I'm sorry, her and her siblings worked as farm laborers and she cropped cotton for a farmer. His name was J.A. Cox. Now, I wish we had, I wish there were other images of her out there, but these are pretty much it. Now, by the 1940s, Lena is all grown up and she becomes the mother of three children and she worked as a maid to support her family. Now, in 1944, Miss Baker started working for a man by the name of Ernest Knight. He was an older white man and he had broken his leg. Now, in all of this, I, I, and I think you could probably see from her photo, she is black, so I don't know if I had mentioned that. But um, Ernest Knight, his son, is the one who actually hired her. And, you know, she went to help him because he had a broken leg. You know, it was a, a job, so she, she took it. Now, Mr. Knight, he owned a grist mill. And right away, it seems as though the abuse started. Um, he began sexually, uh, Mr. Knight, that is, began sexually assaulting Miss Lena multiple times. He would keep her in prison for days at a time. And it was like equivalently, equivalent to slavery. His son and the townspeople did not like their sexual relationship. Now, this was not a relationship of Lena Baker's choice. This was by force. Even during the times when he would let her out, you know, he would, she'd go home and he'd go there and kidnap her and take her back to the grist mill. And, you know, since the townspeople and his son were all in an uproar about this forced relationship, the uh, son of, of Mr. Knight would threaten Miss Baker and, you know, arguments would, would ensue between the father and the son about Miss Lena Baker. Um, also, in addition to the abuse that she was getting from Ernest Knight, his son would beat Lena up too, all because he didn't like this relationship that was one-sided, basically. On April 29th, 1944, Mr. Ernest Knight went to Lena Baker's home. He forcibly removed her from her home and took her back to the grist mill, as usual. And he locked her in. Miss Baker, of course, did not want to be there. She wanted to leave. 
And of course, Ernest Knight would not allow her to leave. He used to lock her into the grist mill with this like iron bar thing. And some things went down. It, it was a tussle because she's trying to leave. He's trying to keep her imprisoned. And this struggle uh, pursued, ensued, and there was a, a gun. And she ended up shooting him in the head. And of course, you know, Miss Lena went home right after this. I'm sure that she was probably dazed, upset, hysterical, had anxiety, like all of the things going on due to this situation. So she goes home. She is later arrested on the charge of capital murder of Mr. Ernest Knight. The trial convened on August 14, 1944. It was at the courthouse in Randall County under the jurisdiction of Judge Charles William Two Guns Warland, War, Warren, no, wait a minute, I'll get it right, Warrell, that's Judge Charles William Two Gun Warrell. He presided over this case, and um, he's he'd been on the bench for a while. Let me interject. I did practice saying that judge's name. I don't know how many times before I started this, so please excuse that. But anyway, this trial convened, and you know, Lena got on the stand and testified in her defense. She let them know, you know, he had taken her from her home. He locked her in there and went to church and then came back in and, you know, she wanted to go home. The struggle ensued and a gun came out. He got shot in the head. Now, I want to also uh, mention that this gun was in his grist mill and he was the one who who had the gun you know of course she was struggling she said she feared for her life so after this uh half a day trial the jury of all white males found miss lena baker guilty of capital murder she was, of course, sentenced to be executed. Now, the governor, Ellis Arnall, granted Baker a 60-day reprieve so that the Board of Pardons and Parole could review the case and determine whether or not it was a just sentence. In January of 1945, the board denied her clemency. Baker's execution date was rescheduled for March the 5th, 1945, and she was taken to Reedsville State Prison on February 23rd, 1945. Between the time that Lena Baker, by the time her clemency had been denied, so from, we're talking... February 23rd, 1945, all the way up to the date she was executed, she still proclaimed her innocence and, you know, she, she just shouted it to the rooftops, but there was nothing to be done to save Miss Lena Baker. Lena Baker. In 2008, there was a movie made about Lena Baker, and it starred Tashina Arnold, Beverly Todd, Peter Coyota, Michael Roker, Chris Burns, Tom Nowicki, and L. Warren Young. 
Lena Baker grew up in a time when race was a matter of life. Lena, I need you to start telling my daddy. I need someone to look after him. You understand? Yes, sir. And death. Now, a woman who tried to do right. Oh, look at Lena with those children. She working hard now. Is about to be done. Mr. Arthur? Very wrong. <laughs> Mr. Arthur liked to kill me. I only done what I done to keep him from doing it. Lena, can you hold your head up? You didn't do nothing to deserve what you got. When innocence is lost, when justice isn't blind, when hope is all you have, truth will set you free. Free now, Mom. We all free now, baby. Let's come to present day. In 2001, Georgia discontinued the use of the electric chair as a means of capital punishment, and now they execute the condemned by lethal injection. In August of 2005, Lena Baker was pardoned by the State Board of Pardons and Parole in Georgia. The board acknowledged that the 1945 decision to deny Lena Baker clemency was a grievous error and that she could have been charged with a lesser crime such as voluntary manslaughter, which would have prevented the sentence of capital punishment. But I got to say, with my opinion interjected here, even if that did happen, she still she would have just been in jail for life because there's no way they would have let a black woman out of jail for killing a white man in those times. This was this was at, uh, you know, in the midst uh, of the civil rights movement and, you know, things going on of that nature. So, I mean, it, it just would not have even if she had lived, it would have probably been a horrible life. I just think, you know, what they should have done was saw the situation for what it was. It was self-defense and, you know, let Miss Lena go. As Lena Baker is escorted to the electric chair, she went to her death calmly proclaiming her innocence. Her last words were, what I done, I done. I did in self-defense or I would have been killed myself. Where I was, I could not overcome it. God has forgiven me. I have nothing against anyone. I picked cotton for Mr. Pritchett. And he has been good to me. I am ready to go. I am one in the number. I am ready to meet my God. I have a very strong conscience. Miss Lena Baker was pronounced dead at 1126 a.m. After six minutes and several shocks. The newspaper reported Baker's death with a headline, Baker Burns.